This week, we interview Matt Duran from Tenable Network Security on jumpstarting your InfoSec career. Ed Scotus joins us in studio to talk about his latest projects, including NetWars, CyberCity, and CyberNetWarCity. Special guests from Black Hills Information Security will join us to talk about Hacking Team, Adobe Zero Days, again, and forced security updates. All that and more, so stay tuned. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where exploits run wild, packets aren't the only things getting sniffed, and the cocktails flow steady. It's Paul's Security Weekly. This episode is brought to you by NetSparker, the developers of the only false positive free web application security scanners, enabling you to automatically identify vulnerabilities and security flaws in all of your websites, web applications, and web services. NetSparker scanners are available in two editions, NetSparker Desktop and NetSparker Cloud, the enterprise level online scanning service. For more information, visit their website at netsparker.com forward slash security weekly. And by Pony Express. Check out the Community Edition and turn your Nexus 7 into a lean and mean pen testing machine. For all those hard to reach places, there's Pony Express. Visit them on the web at PonyExpress.com. And by Onapsis, the leading provider of solutions to protect ERP systems from cyber attacks. Customers can secure their SAP and Oracle business critical platforms from espionage, sabotage, and financial fraud risks. Visit them on the web at Onapsis.com. And now, fire up a packet capture, pour yourself a beer, and give the intern control of your botnet. Here's your host, a man who loves to sit on toilet seats but not clean them, and instead buys new ones, Paul Asadorian. Hello everyone, welcome to Security Weekly, it's July 16th, 2015, and this is even episode 427. Of course, I'm your host, Paul Asadorian. And yes, I, I did buy a new toilet seat today. So, there. Um, in studio with us, we have some very special guests. Mr. Ed Scotus is here live in studio. None other than Ed Scotus. Ed, welcome to Security Week. It's good to be here, Mr. Paul. Thank it's you. It's nice to have you here in studio. It's lovely. Uh, and you're lovely. Well, and thanks. your head is very... Lovely Bulbous. as well. Yes. You were all worried about it. Yeah, it looks lovely. <laughs> it looks good. Well, thank you. You look lovely, too. Oh, thank nice, you. Nice, nice place. Yeah. Oh, thank, thank you very dress. much. Yeah, I'm classing it up. It's tonight. a good look for you. Yeah, thank you. Once a week, I get to dress up and play podcast host. Uh, Dakota is here with us in studio. Welcome, Dakota. Absolutely. Thank you, Bob. Dakota, you work for Black Hills Information Security, and you were uh, gracious enough to come down and help us out in studio as Larry and Jack are both traveling. So who's going to play Larry and who's going to play Jack? Oh, Ooh, okay. Question. You wow. guys work that out while I introduce the other. Uh, on the line, also, this is like the Black Hills Information Security plus Ed Scotus show. Because uh, we have <laughs> Bo on the lines. Welcome, Bo. Thank you for coming to Security Weekly this week. Thanks, Paul. Bo also works for Black Hills Information Security. And, of course, the always vicarious Mr. Joff Thayer is here with us as well. The illustrious vicarious Joff Thayer. Welcome, yes. everybody. Yes, good day, Paul. How are you? It's good I'm to be I'm doing fantastic. Um, I'm doing so fantastic that I'm going to read announcements. Uh, are you ready to learn combat firmware analysis? Register for my Black Hat course. That's right, Embedded Device Security Assessments for the Rest of Us, a two-day hosted class at Black Hat Las Vegas. Registration includes breakfast, lunch, and access to the Black Hat briefings, business hall, sponsor workshops, Sponsor sessions and arsenal talks. So it's interesting when you register for your a Black Hat class, you actually get access to all of the things at Black Hat. You don't get to go to the briefings, you get to pay extra for that, but you get to go to all of the other things that happen at Black Hat. So I think that's kind of cool that that's included with your training. And I try and promote that so that people will sign up for my training. Um, so <laughs> make sure you go to securityweekly.com forward slash IOT. Register today. Um, we have, uh, I think, more students than I planned for, which means I'm not sure that everyone will get a wireless router. I, I think I have 20 wireless routers to give away for the class. So 
um, maybe we'll have to do uh, part of make it part of the competition for the class uh, and give those away. So I'm very much very excited about that. We'll be introducing IV Wirt intentionally vulnerable wireless router firmware distribution in that class. So it's going to be isn't a lot that of fun. isn't that all of them. Paul, isn't that kind of an oxymoron? Well, I see. I don't know if it's necessarily intentional, Joff. I think it's... Uh, uh, oh, okay. Maybe yes. their distribution for is unintentional wireless router vulnerable firmware just, distribution. Just drop the first word and just say vulnerable firmware. Vulnerable firmware. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, let's see. Our next special guest is Matt Duran. Matt is a recruiter at Tenable Network Security. He's always looking for talented security engineers, C and C++ engineers, front-end and back-end developers, and security sales folks. What do, what do you do with those people when you find them? You know what? I don't want to know. Um, <laughs> if, if you dig JavaScript, PHP, Linux, or low-level programming, they want to hear from you. Matt, welcome to Security Weekly. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Yes. Previously, we had Sean Mitchell from Tenable Security uh, on the show. Now we've got Matt. Matt, you have a lot more facial hair <laughs> than Sean. I, I do, but he has a lot more hair on his head than me. This so, is true. Uh, this we, is true. We balance each other out. You know, it's, complete, it's a yin and yang. Yeah. I think I'm detecting a trend, actually. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so, Matt... Um, so what, what is your role uh, at Tenable? Share with our listeners your, your kind of role. How it differs maybe from Sean's and in, in what positions you're recruiting for? Well, most importantly, Sean is my boss. So yes. I'll do what he tells me. We say nice things about Sean. Yeah. We yeah. love Sean. Uh, yeah, he's a good guy. Um, so I, I lead up the technical side of uh, Tenable's recruiting operation. So like you said, mostly the, uh, the engineers for R&D. Uh, I've dabbled in the sales stuff a little bit. At the beginning of the year, we had a big push in that, so I was focused on on some of the sales roles for a while. Uh, happy to be back on the engineering side. No, no offense to our sales friends out there, but, uh, but the technology side is, is what I'm most interested in. So, uh, you know, it's uh, I'm, I'm out there talking to candidates every day, uh, trying to find new people, sourcing through various channels out there, and and. You know, making that introduction to our hiring managers, uh, giving the candidates the insight scoop. No, Matt, ha yeah. have you always been uh, a recruiter? Uh, had a recruiting role, or for some Pretty time? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Ever since I graduated college. Uh, okay, so now have you recruited in other industries? Or has it always been technology? Has it always been security? Mostly technology. Okay. Uh, I did a brief stint doing college recruiting. I was a manager for college recruiting mm -hmm. for about four years, and I touched. Uh, it was for an insurance company, so a lot of financial stuff. Uh, oh, good. Operation. So I wanted to ask you, Matt, how does recruiting for security differ from recruiting for other industries, including technology or not technology? Yeah, th there's some similarities for sure. Um, but I, I would say the biggest difference is, and this is going to change when you talk about recruiting for a company like, like Tenable, mm -hmm. a little bit different than doing security for, say, federal government or, or, or a you know, general company out there. But I think the biggest difference is is just the volume of things that, that you have to know as a candidate. You have to know some programming. You have to know some uh, some networking. You got to know a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and as me as a recruiter, I got to know some of that stuff too. Don't get me wrong. I'm just a stupid recruiter out here sometimes. I don't know everything on the technical side. But uh, but they're a lot harder to find sometimes because they require that diverse skill set. And yeah, we've, we've talked about that on the show before. Um, that's interesting. That's interesting. Um, so, Matt, what when you are recruiting for information security or uh, really engineering positions at Tenable, um, you know, what do you recommend that people do to prepare to be able to be the best candidate for um, an engineering or security research position at a company like Tenable Network Security? Well, that, this is going to depend on who you're talking to. Uh, so first first step in the process, right, you're, you're going to talk to me. Uh, I, I expect somebody to know a little bit about the company, you know, and this is not just for Tenable. This is any company if you're interviewing. Go ahead and look for all the information you can find on somebody, uh, on a company. Even the person you're talking to, I'm out on the web so many places that it's easy to find me, so maybe knowing a little bit about who you're talking to is, is important. But when it gets down to it, you, you kind of have to know what you want to do. Uh, you can apply to a lot of jobs out there. They're all going to be a little bit different. They're all going to have some different skill sets and different functions. But if you don't really know what you want to do, you, you, 
probably going to waste your time and, and the company's time as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, researching the position. I, I think that goes for any job position. Really, is is very critical. Um, what are, what are some skills? that people can build that make them uh, a better candidate than others in security research and in how do you recommend that people go build those skills? Yeah, the, a lot of times it's it's all about practicing what you've learned. Um, I, I've heard you guys talk about degrees before and, and some people have a degree, some people don't. But if you're not in love with doing this stuff after hours too, let's say may work full time somewhere, but you're not at home doing something a little extra, a little bit different, something that will uh, enhance your skill set. It could be as simple as running your own home network. Uh, it could be taking a class. It could be taking uh, just listening to podcasts, reading books, magazines. Taking uh, SANS classes. Taking SANS classes, absolutely. <laughs> um, Doing net wars. I was going to try to work like that, that in there. Yeah. I saw like, yes. SANS. So, um, but I think just, just making yourself stand out, uh, practicing your, your trade, and, and just getting better. What about uh, contributing to the community in the form of an open source project or starting your own blog or things like that? I mean, are those some things that you look for as part of having the right qualifications? Yeah, I, I think those are, are pretty important too. Uh, if, if you're not willing to go beyond what you're being paid to do sometimes, uh, and, and being in open source communities, it, it's about learning too. So it, it says you're, you're contributing to something, but you're also looking to get something back. Uh, so that, that that's that's important because you know getting ahead in your career is about learning new things and and that's a way for you to you know, stretch a little bit further. Maybe you're not an expert at at Python, but there's something you can play around with and learn a little bit uh, and, and then get better at that. And then you can just incorporate that into your skill set. And a lot of companies are looking for that uh, extra stuff like open source projects uh, to to add to a resume. And, and it's a, it's a no-brainer to put that kind of stuff on your resume if, if you're hoping to be found. Matt, I want to go back to where you said you uh, should have your own home network. And I, I don't know, I, I don't think I've shared this on uh, in the previous interview with Sean, but when I was interviewing for a position as a Unix systems administrator, yeah. you know, they said, well, you know, do you have experience with NFS? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I run that at home. They're like... What do you mean you run NFS at home? I'm like, I, I have that in my, my home network. And Doesn't everybody? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So and they were like, well, what, what kind of systems do you have at home? I'm like, funny you should ask because I brought a picture of my systems that I have at home. And it was this gigantic oh, network rack work. that I had set up in my mom's living room. And it had, you know, SGI systems and Sun systems and PCs and networking gear. And I'm like, yeah, this is my, my lab at home that I, I play around with. And they're like... Well, that's pretty cool. And I, I got the... Matt, when I told you that story, you're like, so did you get the job? I'm like, yeah, I got, I got the job. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if I recommend that people bring pictures of their... Maybe it if hurt. it works for... It can't hurt, it can't right? Hurt. I don't know. So yeah. might but want it, to de-emphasize the you know, That kind of stuff comes yeah. up. I remember talking to a, a candidate and, and he ended up getting the job and we were talking about his experience with, with Linux and he hadn't had any job where Linux was part of his day-to-day. -day, but... He had this amazing setup at home. He knew all, you know, command line prompts. He knew all that that kind of you know, in and out with with Linux, and he's done well. Uh, he's been promoted, and and so what you do in your spare time, if it's going to help you get ahead in mm. your in your full time job, you know, and you like it, that's the big thing. You got to like it. Mm. Um, that that shows that you're passionate about what you do, and and you're going to get ahead. So, uh, does uh, where do degrees play in when you're interviewing for these positions, Matt? Because I have to be honest, I know a lot of very talented engineers that don't have degrees. I know yeah. a lot of very talented engineers that have degrees. So, how do you factor that in? I, I'm I'm not one to put a whole lot of emphasis on a degree if they've done what we need them to do. Uh, now, it depends on some departments and some companies out there. Uh, you, you do have people that that you know, maybe degree snobs, I don't know. But to me, I don't really care. Uh, I care that you know what we want you to do, that you you can, you know, put you down in front of a terminal and you can do the things that you say you can do on your resume. I mean, for, forget about degrees. I don't even like resumes because people can lie about resumes, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, but I think degrees and, and certifications um, are great as far as a jumping off point. 
it, it doesn't mean a lot if you got this degree and you don't know how to work a, a system. Mm. It, you showed up to class on time. You did all your projects. Right, so. right, right. But so that. how much do you vet what people are putting on their resumes and telling you as a recruiter? Do you rely on like the other technical people in Tenable to do that kind of vetting? I, I can do a little bit. Um, not, I don't, don't test me, though, because I'll probably fail miserably. But, <laughs> uh, but I, you know, I've, I've done mostly technology stuff for, for almost 14, 15 years. You, know, you don't spend that much time in it and not pick up a few things. Uh, I, I do rely a lot on the, the technical folks here to, to you know, go deep dive on that stuff. You know, I have a core set of questions I ask. Um, things that I that I can kind of pick out from somebody. Do they do they really understand? They tell me they they know Linux, but uh, uh, but they don't know how to kill a process uh, in 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 Linux or kill a rogue process. Uh, I, Which I is interesting because part of the answer to that question is in the question. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I, I sometimes throw the word in there and they still get it wrong. And they still get it wrong. Otherwise, yeah. uh, I, I try not to use it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's pretty. Funny. What are some of your red flags uh, when people are interviewing for security positions? Like, what's one of the, you know, things used to wee people out, or like some really big red flags that, that you see with people? Um, not really understanding the job. Bottom line, uh, I, I I hate going back to that, but it's, it's folks that didn't really understand what they were applying to. Maybe they have a great resume, but uh, you know, they. They're applying to a programming position, and they keep telling me they're a Java programmer when the job doesn't require Java. Um, mm. Now, when it comes to dates and times, uh, that's another thing. You know, we get into I mean, why somebody's leaving or you know, why why they left a certain time or what's that gap. Uh, there's sometimes some hesitation and some some pauses in responses that that you can kind of pick up pretty quickly. Mm. There's nothing wrong with gaps and. And, and dates of employment. Uh, if you got laid off, you got laid off. Tell people that stuff. Right. Uh, Be honest, right? I mean, yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. Um, heck, I don't even care if you tell me you got let go, depending on the job. Mm -hmm. There's probably a valid reason for some of that stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, I'd rather get that stuff out ahead of time than, than have to figure it out later on. Matt, what are some of the uh, craziest things that you've heard on an interview? Answers to questions or strange behavior we see all those on yeah. the internet right what are some of your experiences with some crazy stuff that happened uh on the interviews so this this didn't happen to me uh but it did happen to a, a former colleague of mine uh this was somebody that came in for, for an on-site interview uh not not here Tim. it's an old job and they took their shoes off <laughs> and started picking at their toes Ooh. wait like did they have socks on or they took those off too, and they just started oh, shoes off. and socks off. Yeah, shoes and socks. Uh, it was a favorite story. I love that story. When the when bad form. I, I still bad think form. about that one. <laughs> wow. And, uh, another one. Um, uh, it was a, a woman that was not. Uh, she she ended up not being very qualified for the job, and I think everybody knew that uh, right away. So instead of trying to sell herself a little bit harder, she gave flyers for her uh, her band. Uh, to the interviewers and ask them like to out and see a concert or something. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing ever. That's, she just punted and was like, "Well, I'm gonna be doing more of this band thing. So why don't you guys come hear me play?" <laughs> How funny is that? Oh, that's great. All right, Matt, are you ready to play Five Questions with Security Weekly? Uh, I hope so. Okay. Three oh, no, words. No, oh, you, sorry. Before Joe. you go there, Paul. Yes. You really should ask. Matt, have you actually prepared for five questions with Security Weekly? No, no, I, I should have. I asked Paul if he was going to do that to me, and, and, and then I didn't really go back and, and listen to the answers. So I, I don't, uh, the questions, I don't, uh, I don't really have anything ready right now. All right. So, Strap yourself. It comes out better when it's off, off the cuff. All right. Well, this, I get to interview the interviewer, right? This is, this is great. All right, Matt. And you could feel free to use the, any or all of these questions on potential interviews that you do at Tenable Network Security. <laughs> I'll let you pick. Question number four is going to be pretty funny. But three words to describe yourself. All right. Uh, uh, not Duck Dynasty. 
<laughs> if you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? Uh, let's see. About myself or about my background? I guess. Uh, I guess I'd probably probably do a self help book. Uh, uh, how to win at life using self deprecating humor. If you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? <laughs> um, well, I'm a recruiter, right? So, uh, uh, so I'll say uh, using uh, crappy LinkedIn in mails. <laughs> uh, in the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? Second. Choose two celebrities to be your parents. All right. Um, let's see. All right. Uh, I'll say Sandra Bullock and Odorous Arungus. Very what? nice. Very cool. Everybody knows who that is. I don't know. If, does everybody know who that it is? It doesn't matter. It's your answer. So okay. <laughs> I, I'm not going to change it on you. But if you would like to elaborate, that is also fine as well. That is the uh, yet uh, deceased singer of Guar. Of course. Of course. Should have known. Yeah, Should have yeah. known. Yeah, I, I knew that. Didn't you know that? <laughs> so, Matt, uh, I'm going to have our, our production staff put the graphic up uh, for Tenable Network Security. Uh, proud sponsors of Security Weekly. We're helping you uh, promote the jobs yeah. that you have available. Over 60 plus engineering yeah, positions. Eight. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's incredible how many, how many positions we have right now. Great company to work for. I can vouch for that because I've worked there since 2009. So if you go to securityweekly.com forward slash tenable jobs, you can see all of the open positions, including over 60 plus in engineering and security research. So we encourage you to, uh, to come work at Tenable and uh, have an interview with Matt where hopefully you don't pick your toe cheese or hand out flyers for your band. And, uh, and if you don't mind, I can uh, say one thing. Sure. If, if there's... If you go to the site and you don't see something that, uh, that fits your skill set right now, uh, we, we still have ways to kind of get on job alerts and things like that. And if you don't mind, maybe afterward I can, I can send you a link that maybe tweet out or something like that. Uh, sure. How to you know, get job alerts, how to figure out you know, what's new at, here at Tenable. That way you don't always have to come back. You can just get those in your inbox. Oh, I thought you were going to say, so you find someone better, <laughs> a better product, <laughs> product strategist than... <laughs> I don't think we could. This guy, we got the best. Well, thank you, Matt. Well, you're doing a great job, and everyone uh, who is looking for a job or a career change, uh, contact us, securityweekly.com forward slash tenable jobs. And with that, we're going to take a short break. Matt, again, thank you very much. We're going to take a short break. Come back and interview, or not interview, because this is actually his ninth time on the show. We'll be doing a segment with Ed Scotus. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 